It is time for another viewer match. So what I got for you today is a game that got played a little bit higher up on the ladder. This is going to be a Diamond League Terran vs Zerg. Spawning on the left hand side of the map on Catalina LE, playing with the red drones, we have got none other than Donson. Or Donson, one of the two, and his opponent spawning in the bottom right hand corner of the map instead. Playing with the blue SCVs, he goes by the nickname of Elbow Mittens. Elbow Mittens! I've been thinking about that nickname. For like a minute or two right now, and I, kill, I, I still can't quite figure out what elbow mittens would possibly be. So I've come to the conclusion that it could be one of two things. And maybe this is like a common thing on some part of the world, but really in the Netherlands, I have never seen elbow mittens before or heard of that word. But either it's gonna be like mittens that go straight over your elbow. I No, you know, that I guess would not be very practical because I guess that's a joint, right? It's not gonna really stay on very well. Or it could be like elbow length mittens. Which, now I come to think of it actually, you might be able to put on the first mitten, but then like the second one is gonna be nearly impossible, because you're only gonna have like a thumb and then like, you know, essentially one finger to work with. So how are you ever gonna like, put on the second mitten? I guess I'm more of a glove kind of guy myself, although it may not just simply get cold enough in the Netherlands to really warrant mittens. But anyways, I feel like we should probably talk about the game, right? Why am I talking about mittens and gloves here for the last uh, minute? I mean, does anyone care that I prefer gloves over mittens? I'm not entirely sure, but if elbow mittens, if you're watching this game, Please let us know where that nickname comes from. I mean, in the comment section down below. I would love to know that. I mean, there has to be a, there has to be a story behind that nickname. I can't imagine there's not. But anyways, so this is going to be a Diamond League game. So I do expect that both of these players know what mittens are. And more importantly, uh, build orders and strategies and whatnot as well. Although mittens are, you know, I don't think you can play StarCraft mittens on. <laughs> I don't think you can go over like 60 APM with mittens on. Also, how are you going to ever use your mouse buttons effectively, right? That's kind of... And, and, you know, like, build stuff, that's that's pretty helpful, too. I guess mittens aren't really a way to play StarCraft. I hope that your boo is not currently wearing elbow mittens. That would not be comfortable for his elbows, or his hands, or his StarCraft performance. But anyways, enough about mittens, let's talk about video games instead. So, Donson, of course, he's, he's opening up standard, right? Like I said, this is going to be a Diamond League match, so both of these players will have a good understanding of how this matchup works out. Now, that doesn't mean that neither of them is going to be capable of doing something a little bit strange. Donson, for example, I mean, he hasn't set the rally point yet for his natural expansion. That is already a little bit strange right here. He's also under some threat right now by that very first Reaper, but apparently the Reaper... <gasps> years of training in the camp of elbow mittens, and the guy just got surrounded by drones... You were, like, years of training, right there, in the barracks, right? Doing push-ups every day, testing your jetpack, making sure that you can jump up and down cliffs, and you get surrounded by the worker unit of your opponent, that you just died after tickling them with some, like, pistols for a little while? Come on now, dude. Elbow Mittens, apparently, though, uh, is not gonna be able to do a whole lot, although he did put a couple of these drones on idle, which I guess is actually more result than killing, like, three workers, because essentially, what they're probably gonna do is just hang out here for, you know, the remainder of this game, making his opponent think that he's got a solid economy, when in reality, he's gotta subtract three workers right there in total. Now, two Zerklings also uh, did not have a will to live. So far, we have seen a bunch of units already suicide into the opponent's base. A little bit unfortunate here, but judging by the setup from the Terran player, he is planning to go for the 16 Marine drop with, of course, the double Medivac as well as Stimpak. He's setting up for that perfectly right now, going for that double gas here, and this does allow him to not only transition towards more units as well as a third base, but also go for a very powerful timing attack that the Zerg is going to be forced to respond with. Now, interestingly enough... Donson has produced a couple of overlords, but he's currently not producing anything. He's making a roach warren, but that is about it. He's also still not set the rally point of his natural, interestingly enough. Not entirely sure what that is all about, but he is most definitely <sighs> planning to go for a whole lot of roaches. Donson indeed is basically putting all of his eggs in one basket to try and do a big push. Now here's the thing, right? When you're trying to push into a Terran player as a Zerg, you kind of do need to kill him. You kind of do need to kill them, because they've got this wonderful unit known as the Mule. They drop down from the sky, quite literally, and they, you know, start harvesting these mineral patches, and they, they bring a lot of these resources home. At the same time, though, the Roaches are already out, so they're gonna start walking across the map. And I think that the Medivacs are just about to pop as well. Like, Terran players usually try and move out right when the Medivacs spawn, right? So Medivacs are gonna come out here in just a split second. 
I think that he's immediately gonna lift up all of his marines. So look at that, right? He's got a perfect amount of marines right here to lift up uh, 16 of them inside of that medevac. Now, the medevac will get spotted here, or both of them do get spotted here by that overlord. The roaches are once again grouping up together, having a bit of a, you know, a discussion of the attack plan, but apparently their, uh, their brothers are not willing to discuss anything anymore, and they're gonna go straight for their throats, but now that link speed is underway, there's also two medevacs flying across the map, and there's like no defenses here at home for the Terran player. Is he gonna return home? No, he's actually gonna unload all of the marines inside of the main base of his opponent. Elbow Mittens is gonna try and do as much damage. All of his marines equipped with Elbow Mittens as well. Of course, they only really need to use that trigger finger on that, you know, Gauss rifle anyway, so don't really care about all of that shenanigans. They gun down that uh, that spawning pool within just a matter of seconds as well. Not going after the workers just yet, which I think is going to be top priority, but Elbow Mittens, uh, meanwhile, of course, he's forced to micro with like two thumbs and, and two fingers as well. He's gonna try and construct a bunker here very, very rapidly, but at the same time, I mean, I really love to see him just move around here. Come on, Elbow Mittens, move your Marines down that ramp. There we go. He's gonna start dealing some damage once again. Really quite impressed, though, with the amount of APM that he can make here off of just four fingers in total. I guess he will be capable of gunning down a lot more of these workers eventually here. And while the drones are trying to go for that surround, of course, Medevac will be able to pick up these units and make sure that they can evacuate on out of there. I really wonder if Elbow Mittens could not have done just way more damage there. Though. I mean, the Marines, once again, will be dropped off. They're also being healed back up. But at the same time, I mean, these roaches are still going to town. One of the orbital commands is already lifted up. He's going to try and, at the very least, you know, make sure that he doesn't lose all of these buildings. Of course, you know, base racing against a Terran player is a little risky as a Zerg because they can just simply lift up the majority of their buildings. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar here in just a second for the Terran player in blue. Roach is still dealing damage. Apparently, though, the Marines... You know, they're just gunning down drones on the other side of the map, but the SCVs and then a couple of reinforcing marauders are trying to make the best of this scenario, but they are just simply all dying, and there, indeed, we do see the liftoff. There, indeed, we do see the liftoff. The Marines still gunning down more and more of these, like, buildings, I suppose, and I really wonder if that was the smart decision. Okay, so here's the pro tip, right? And this is something that I see pretty much everywhere up to, like... You know, once people hit Master League, if you're trying to do damage to your opponent, right, always try and go for the guaranteed damage. Now, sometimes you may be able to gun down a hatchery, right? Sometimes you may be able to gun down a spawning pool, and sometimes you may be able to gun down a roach warren. But that's such a big risk here by the Terran player, and honestly, kind of unnecessary. When you think about it, what is guaranteed damage? Well, it's going to be these low HP drones. I mean, drones are really the lifeline for the Zerk, and they're gonna be a much easier target to pick off. And I honestly think that while picking off that natural and whatnot was great, killing like 10 workers there would have been way better than killing the hatchery. Would have been way better. Now, the roaches did come back home. They're going to be able to defend these drones for a little while longer. But look at the worker count. It's currently, quite literally, two SCVs here for the Terran player versus 28 workers. 28 workers is quite a bit. Now, you do have to keep in mind that there are still two orbital commands around, right? They're going to fly all over the map. I'm assuming he's going to try and land one right here on the, uh, I guess this would be the third player's spawn location. The third non-existing player's spawn location. And then he's also got another command center here on the right-hand side of the map that he will be forced to lift off once more here in just a second. Marines and Marauders, however, still continuing this harassment, trying to get this around here with the drones. But I don't think that's going to be doing all too much. Now, Donson actually... I mean, even though he's in Diamond League, I guess he doesn't have all too much experience with this because look at that. He's already racking up, uh, he's racking up to like 3,000 resources almost. That is kind of ridiculous, my man. You should really consider getting a queen. That would be helpful. That way he's gonna like be able to get more larva. Whenever you're, no, no, dude, this is your lifeline. That wasn't even remotely clicked on the mineral field. What is this? Elbow mittens. I guess these mules may still be, yeah, there we go. They're going to be capable of getting their, their elbow mittens out, I suppose. And now they're going to finally start mining. I guess it gets cold on this planet that we're currently landed on. But here we go. Even though apparently he didn't like the three 400 resources or that he just wasted by not letting these, uh, these mules mine. He's still going to be able to get a reasonable income. Like, look at the income count, right? <laughs> This is gross. This is, this is what has been bothering me about, like, Terran since, like, the beginning of, of StarCraft 2. I mean, I understand that the mule is perfectly necessary right now in the meta, right? But two workers are going to be able to outmine 28 or so? At least, like, temporarily? I mean, as a Zerg player, by heart, right? And I love Terran, don't get me wrong, I've played a ton of Terran. 
But whenever I'm in that scenario as Terran, where I just lost all of my economy and I just look like I just dropped like six mules, I kind of feel dirty as well when I play that. Is that just me? Maybe that's just me. Anyway, the roaches will be able to make their way back home now that they've cleaned up everything with the exception of this one refinery. I mean, the refinery apparently is going to be allowed to stay alive for a little while longer. Elbow Mittens is trying to make the best of the army that he's got right now, but I think we have arrived at a bit of a lull in this game. I mean, Donson, still, like, how do you get this many resources, my man? How do you get this many resources? I guess he may simply be used to cheesing the vast majority of his matches. So that kind of means that he may not be all too comfortable playing a macro game right here. But really, if you are a Zerg player and you're ever in this scenario, or any StarCraft player, like, for that matter, right? Like I said, these guys are Diamond League. So they're, like, top, like, I would say probably, like, top 15% in the game or so. Uh, at the bare minimum, like, depending on what league they are in Diamond. Um, if you are, like, ever flooding minerals, start making more buildings. I mean, it may sound very obvious, but just make more stuff. Well, for example, a lot of professional Zerg players will never be making, you know, three hatcheries off of two bases, right? You can most definitely make six hatcheries. I mean, six hatcheries is far better than having 2,000 resources, uh, you know, just hanging around doing a whole lot of nothing. I mean, you're gonna have to spend that money, because right now, these resources that you've been gathering and the amount of workers that you get, it's all fine and dandy, but if you can't spend it, it's nearly impossible to really do anything with it. So I would actually not mind seeing Donson, like, take two hatcheries here, maybe another hatchery over here, maybe another hatchery over there, with the intention of maybe doing a little bit of damage, but not really capable of, you know, not really, like, you know, expecting all of them to stay alive, but if they do, at least you're going to be able to spend some of your money there and take a bit of a risk because right now it's just definitely not worth it now donson and <gasps> you know that there is a second command center somewhere he's checking out all of the bases with the exception of the one in the top right corner of the map now marauders once again getting picked up nice little bit of micro there by elbow mittens making the best of the you know through thumbs that he's got at his disposal right now to uh to really try and, and micro his ass off now, apparently, the, uh, the Zerkings did just find the base here in the top right, uh, or I guess this would be the, yeah, I guess it would technically be the top right corner-ish. Uh, but he did find this base right here, so he will be able to send over quite a few more units. And there, indeed, we do see a handful of links once again running across the map. Now, Elbow Mittens, even though he doesn't have a big economy, he's still not actually producing nearly enough stuff. I mean, he couple he needs a couple of uh, depots here. He's going to need more production in general because these Zerklings, they're going to be able to go to town. They're going to go straight for this mineral line. And this is what I mean, right? Going for the guaranteed damage. Going for the low HP units. I mean, he could potentially try and target find down an orbital command or a bunker or anything along those lines. But he could also just go ahead and kill all of the SCVs and sort of like kill the Terran's lifeline. Now, with the exception, of course, of the mule, the mule could still be very, very annoying. But I feel like at this point, Donson has picked himself up a solid lead. Even though he's he's floating over 5,000 resources, right? Even though he's floating that much. He's making the best of this scenario right now. But he really needs to get on top of his production. Look at these Queen Injects. Or non-existent Queen Injects, for that matter. He really needs to start spending his money. When you are playing, like... A game yourself, right? And you're like comparing your own matches to that of a professional gamer. Please keep in mind that they don't miss Queen Injects. They do not miss their expand timings. They will not be flooding 5,000 resources at any point. I don't think there's ever been a professional game where they, they flood 5,000 resources with a non-maxed out army in a professional game. It just simply doesn't work that way. Um, you really, really, really need to just simply start spending that. Because like, besides the economy, spending your money is by far the most important thing. And look at that production tab. It's like... Kind of disappointing right now for Donson. I mean, sure, he's finally getting hatcheries, which I do like a lot. Is he getting a double expense? Sure, I like that one a lot as well. But he is not quite capable of closing out this game, I don't think. I mean, Metavex, they're great units. If he would spend his money right now, I mean, imagine all of these roaches uh, being morphed into Ravagers, for example. That would be doing so much work here already. But Donson is going to continue this aggression for a little while longer. This may actually do more damage than I realized, although there is a bunker there as well as... Do they have Stimpak? Uh, they do have Stimpak, yeah, so there's also Concussive Shell, so that's a rather big deal. Of course they've got Stimpak, he went for the 60 Marine drop, right? But these Marauders, I mean, they're gonna be able to trade with this very nicely, and look at that, that Concussive Shell dealing so much damage. Marauders, of course, still great at picking off all of these units, and these Concussive Shells are doing a lot of work as well. And all of a sudden, Donson, while he tried overwhelming his opponent, he's got 5,000 resources plus in the bank. That means that he is most definitely not quite gonna be capable of doing so. But imagine, if he would have spent all of those resources and gotten himself like another like I don't know 50 roaches imagine 50 roaches marching up this Terran base right on top of like the 20 that just died or so there is absolutely no way that the Terran player would be able to survive there so just simply spend your money 
Try your very best. Come up with a, a way to spend your money. I mean, Queen and Jax is priority number one whenever you are flooding. Like, having Larva. I think you can, like, sort of consider Larva, like, a third resource for a Zerg player. Uh, having Larva and, like, spending all your money, it's crucial. And even though Donson is still very far ahead, he's giving his opponent a chance to climb back in. Now, Elbow Mittens making the best of this scenario thus far. He's gonna end up losing one of these tanks, I'm afraid. And actually, ugh. The Medivac right there also ended up getting killed. That is a rather big deal. I guess Donson just doesn't like Queen Injects. There we go. He finally does start injecting a bunch again. Definitely consider just queuing up injects as well. It's totally a legit way of playing, but... Elbow Mittens, I mean, he is gonna continue onwards and just simply macro out his army. He has managed to get his money low, which is nice. I mean, obviously, he ended up losing a lot of SCVs, so that makes it easier to get his money low as well. But look at that. 48 workers killed in total here by the Zerg player in this match. And still flooding so much. Now, I can already imagine the comment section on this video. Like, oh my god, I can't believe these guys are Diamond League. He's floating so many... I guarantee you, scroll down right now. There's going to be one guy, at the very least, that commented something along those lines. Here's the thing, guys. When you're playing your own game, it's very easy to uh, to get stuck in these kinds of uh, games, right? When you're just simply trying your very best and you're, like, smelling blood and you want to close it out. But then when you're watching it, you know, as a neutral observer, I suppose, it, it plays very, very differently once again. And you're going to be in quite a different mindset, I suppose. And you may uh, you may be able to play and look at this a little bit more neutrally than uh, than Donson is doing right now while playing this game, you know? Uh, and, and, you know, it's obviously pretty clear that he should be focusing on spending his money here, but... There is, there is a big chance that he is just simply trying and playing his heart out right now. You look at the amount of workers that he's creating, right? I love that. I think that's really smart. But if he would just bring his money to zero, he could just win the game. But then again, he's probably so busy in this game trying to macro out a large army and really building up the stuff that he needs that he's just simply sort of caught up in this weird, weird game. On top of that, this requires, like, this is one of those games that you get better at by just simply playing it a ton. Okay, and what I mean with that is that like, he may be really good in, like, your run-of-the-mill standard Zerg vs. Terran game. And the same can be said right here for Elbow Mittens. They may both be really good in, like, your standard Zerg vs. Terran game. But then as soon as they get thrown off their builds, and I see this a lot from people that I coach, whenever, like, the game goes into a non-standard scenario, everything sort of, like, falls to pieces. And that is very, very common in StarCraft 2. The only way you're gonna be able to fix those kinds of moments is just by playing the game a ton. I mean, it's one of the reasons why a lot of the Korean pro gamers grind like 30, 40, 50 games every single day just so they get into a lot of these weird scenarios. You know, they play out these funky scenarios, so whenever they have to play a, you know, a televised match or a tournament game um, against the player, and it ends up going into this weird uh, set of rules as well, or this weird, like, setup, they're gonna be capable of at least having the experience and, and the know-how to respond properly in time. And basically, the more you play, the easier these kinds of responses do become. Now, Elbow Mittens, I mean, he's building up a, a sizable army, right? But the thing is, he's only got 20 workers, which is just simply not enough. Donson finally doing a good job here at bringing his money low. I would love to actually just see him more in like 15, you know, or there we go, there we go. Boom, there we go. I was gonna say 15 Ravagers, but 16 Hydras works for me too. All right, Donson has brought his money down to a very low count. I mean, at least an acceptable amount. And once again, it does look like he's looking to make a push. Now, it doesn't quite have Glyo Reconstitution or the Roach or the Hydra Speed uh, upgrade just yet, but I don't know if it matters. He's brought his money low enough to the point where he can continue starting this push, or he can continue pushing up that ramp here from the Pateran player. That was barely correct English there, but he's just simply gonna go for it. He's just simply gonna go for it. I mean, all of these slow units, unupgraded, trying their best to force their way up this ramp. Oh, this is hurting so much. This is hurting so much as a Zerg player by heart, but I think that he may just simply have too much stuff to overpower his opponent, maybe? There's still one Siege Tank alive. It's dealing so much damage, picking up kill after kill, but I think that there may just simply be a little bit too many Zerg units, in particular with these Terran, or, or rather with these Zerg reinforcements now also arriving on the Terran side of the map. Terran, once again, sieging up that tank, but look at this. I mean, while... It, oh, stop moving. I don't move up the ramp or don't move up the ramp at all, but don't stand at that little, like... You know, that little cornerstone, I suppose, but... I mean, look at the amount of reinforcements that are currently waddling across. I think that Elmo Mittens may be in a world of trouble, because the Zerk, I mean, he's been, he's been trying to close out this game for an extended period of time, actually adding on 11 drones. So he doesn't quite realize yet the advantage that he's in. He may, uh, he may actually assume that his opponent got another hidden base somewhere, or something along those lines, but... Uh, finally, we do see that Morphin into the Ravager. He's gonna be getting more and more and more of them as well, and I think that with that... 
I mean, if he gets uh, a, a, not a round of units here, like not a round of roaches or something along those lines, he's going to be able to just walk up this ramp and buy all, all of these Terran units down here. We go. Well, there's most definitely a room for improvement for both of these players. And I hope I did a reasonable job at explaining what I should be working on myself if I were in their position. Donson does eventually pick up this victory in the game. And I hope you enjoyed watching it yourself as well. If you've got a crazy match, definitely go ahead and submit it to replays at local code.tv because I may end up casting your game too. But other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I'll see you in the next one.